M1 Global presents in Superboy. If it's a little high, it isn't that solid. Свыше 93 килограммов. В синем луринга спортсмен из Литвы представляет клуб The Knight of Planch. Приветствуйте! Tadas the humble champion. Yes. We said my Bavarian. And here's Tadas from Kivichus. He looks like Conan the Bavarian. <laughs> I believe his nickname is the Bear. The Bear, okay. It's the Bear. I think he's wearing a bear in, in that shot. Well, my name is Tadas from Kivichus. I'm from Litvin. I'm from Litvin. I'm from Litvin. I'm from Litvin. Yes, uh, that's I don't know if it's true, but it's popular for sure. That's what people tell you. Alexander has, has gone bear hunting. Supposedly has gone bear hunting. Whether it's true or not, whether it's true or not. I think we'll show you a very good and good fight with Titanov. It's hard for them to believe. Yes, it's hard for them to believe. This is Tadis from Kibishus from Lithuania. Um, he has great strong. reach. He's very strong. He, um, uh, for sure, one of one of the best heavyweight fighters in in Russia. So this is um, this is the main event of the evening. Yep. A challenge for sure. A challenge for Tadas from But how come that Alexander didn't made a reputation like Fedor? He's a very good fighter. I think that Fedor's reputation, first and foremost, comes from the fact that he was unbeaten. I think that his record is basically important. I think that had Fedor not gone 10 years unbeaten, while fighting the best people in the world at that time, I think that he would you know, be considered just another fighter, like a lot of fighters. Uh, and perhaps people would have made so much attention to the way that he's out of the ring. But because of his success inside the ring, he, uh, you know, he made this reputation for himself. And people looked at all of the different traits that he has in terms of his personality yes. and his acting out of the ring, just on the, um, uh, you know, on the basis of his success in the ring. Alexander uh, obviously has a good record of 18 and 5, but still five wins, uh, five more, uh, five losses. Sorry. Uh, five more losses than Fedor had in his career for the first like ten years. So I think that is the reason why. And so in fact, it's more of the attitude outside of the ring that makes Fedor the big Fedor in the world. For sure. And uh, the fact that he's been unbeaten for ten years. Sure. And we can see him in the background. He 
Kings Corner and Alexander, both of you are serious. Alexander looks relaxed, he looks well prepared for this fight. I think that whatever it is, Alexander is always going to be prepared. Sometimes he can lose a little bit of weight, but on the other hand, I think that he thinks why more than he can be Sure, sure. But the last few fights that I've seen, he was very well trained. Kevich just for sure could uh, could have still with, with dropping some of that weight around, around his middle. And in the background um, is the, the third in Malinico brother, Ivan, who people don't know, uh, with the with the box. Um, I didn't uh, know that was much, your brother. Much younger. Um, much younger uh, was a combat sambo fighter. Um, in the last couple of years, I believe he's been serving in the Russian army. Um, uh, he's around about Alexander's height, so he's taller than Fedor. Um, he has good reach, but he's he's much skinnier. He, um, when competing against Sambo, I believe he always competed at 90 kilograms. And he has no interest in competing MMA? Uh, I believe that he has looked at the possibility of competing in MMA, but I'm not sure how serious he, he is in that. Um, for sure, the uh, experience of his brothers and the, the, the height um, of the bar that his brothers who came before him have set is very difficult for him. It's probably, it's probably quite difficult to try and replicate in his, um, you know, in his own career if he is thinking about, about fighting. Yeah. And also maybe has enough self-knowledge that, okay, my brothers are there, but I know that I can't uh, compete with them on that level. Perhaps, perhaps. You I know that he's never rules. fought Listen with martial arts. Command. I know um, uh, time. Mind to his competitive mind to grow. Um, uh, Make it a good sporting man. experience Shake has hands. been exclusively in the combat sambo. Mm -hmm. A combat sambo is not professional, that's just amateur. It's, it's, it's amateur and um, uh, it's more, more of a controlled environment and the rules are you know, obviously slightly different. And safer. And safer. There's and he has no job more. in the army probably, so he thinks why. It's, for me it's not necessary to compete in, yes. in a professional level. Yes, I'm not sure how likely it is that he will be, in, he will be competing. Alexander Milenko wishes good luck to his opponent Tadas Rumkevichus and the special attraction heavyweight fight main event of tonight's tonight's evening is about to begin. Fedor Milenko is, uh, is in Alexander's corner and giving him advice. Let's see how Alexander looks. And Alexander looks skinny compared to Ted Officious, and there was a solid right from Ted Officious that connected, but Ale Alexander just swallows it. And Alexander really is skinny compared to Rimkevich's. He's giving up about 25 kilograms. Another, another one, in and another one. So Rimkevich's is doing a good job in boxing. He's um, he's managed to find Emilienko's chin two or three times so far in this fight, and Alexander's chin is holding up. Marco Brosen is uh, is the referee for this for this fight. Once again, the best referee in M1 Global. Very, very experienced. Very solid. Uh, what is the reason that the Fischius is doing nothing? He's just holding on. But on the other hand, Alexander is not doing too much either. Alexander looks like he's out. trying to break, break out. And they're back to it. That's it, Alexander. That's a really nice combination. Combination connects. And then, time after time, the jab connects now. Another same com combination again. Seems to have a lot of power behind these punches. And it seems that it gets its impact on the, the fishes now. Yeah. 
Do you think that it's likely, you know, that we will see this fight on the feet, or do you think one or the other? This will, this will be a stand up fight. I don't think that Alexander will go out now. He feels very comfortable now. He feels that the check here, the combination, the left, right, left, right. Yep, there he goes again. Okay, now a punch off him. Uh, the Alexander still has the upper hand. You see that the confidence of Alexander is growing. So, so. He's not backing up anymore for you know, tactical reasons, but he's not being pushed back with anymore. Um, Kevin just for sure had a really good flurry of the punches. In the beginning in the first, of the fight, in the first now minute it's all or Alexander here. It's all it's Alexander, Alexander now. It's all Alexander. I think Frankovic's condition is really, is, it, it's really leaving a lot to be desired. He shakes his head. But he's showing Alexander that he's not doing any damage. But I think the reality is quite different. Alexander seems to have a bit of blood about his nose. I think that's one of the weak points in Alexander's fighting, that his guard is coming to him and he takes quite a few punches on the head. For sure. But on the other hand, like now again. But he can take a punch, that's for sure. With that big, big test on Alexander's back, uh, for sure, Alexander and Jeff Monson could, could you know, give each other a run for their money. <laughs> and who's got the scary looking tattoos? See, everything he does is with solid impact and yeah. lots of power. Yeah, Rinkevich is being taken apart. He's bleeding right. already now. Alexander is, is a heavy, heavy puncher. He's, he's a big fighter, he's really fast. Has the Emelianenko speed. So he won't go to the ground. The face of Rinkevich is a mess already. Yeah, he's, in, he's not having more time than this one. He think tried to do a rolling thunder kick, he wanted to make a rolling thunder kick, but it didn't succeed. Yeah, I think it's uh, at the height that Alexander's head is at, I think that's quite a difficult difficult kick to make, to make work. And was that a punch or was that a trip? I, I think it was a trip. And we find ourselves at the very end of the first round with Alexander Milinenko on his back, Tadis Rumkevichus and Alexander Milinenko's open guard, doing a little bit of ground and pound but not really getting through with much. And that's it for the first round. Two more to go. Tadis Rumkevichus finds it difficult to stand up, uses him with Alexander. Alexander Milinenko's knees to prop himself up. And he's bleeding from the nose and scratches on the upper so the forehead. A number of scratches. Bruises more, it's not really scratches, I think. Let's see. He doesn't look that badly damaged, but he looks tired. He looks tired. No, it wasn't the roll. I don't know what it was. Was, that, was it? Was he rolling for a Did, leg? No, it was. A, it was a punch when Alexander went down. It was. A it was right, a punch. It was a left punch, a left hook. Second round. Yeah. See, it was a yeah. left hook. It was a solid left hook. Good. Fedor Malinenko in the corner of Alexander, and they are back for the second round. Main event of M1 Challenge 31, Ice Palace, St. Petersburg, 16th of March, 2012. In a packed house, eh? Don't packed, forget. packed. Eight not to nine thousand people in this hall. Not an empty seat. He's warning for the elbow. Be careful. And I think Alexander starts where he left off. Hits it. 
starts to go for a left right left combination when he's fighting well he's really really he's fast, fast for a heavyweight huh? he's very fast he's quite a force to be reckoned with both of both of the Emilianenko brothers are very fast Fedor was always um, uh, that was always the trump card of his, yep. uh, his game how fast he was back at this moment. This fight doesn't. Emilianenko seems much stronger. Rimkevich has a couple of good moments at the very start and the very end of the first round. But what's happening now is all Alexander. All Alexander. Legendary Fedor Emelianenko in his brother's corner giving out instructions and it seems to be working Alexander's picking Red Kevich just apart. And that's it's it, enough. that's it. That's Michael Brosnan waves I've it had off. Enough. I've had Tardis enough. from Kevich just gestures, he turns his back around, hangs over the ropes and says it's enough, that's enough it. is enough. And the three Emelianenko brothers in shot, that's Ivan. Most people don't know who he is or that. They have a younger brother, but that's Ivan, the, the, the third and leading brother. And Fedor don't need any introduction, of course. Of course. And a very happy Alexander is going to the middle of the ring to hear that he is the winner of this fight. Takes the M1 Challenge 31 main event in the second well, round. Rimkevich just doesn't want any of the punishment the anymore. Minute, yeah. It was he obvious that Alexander Almunia Emelianenko was much, much better on the feet. And he's just waiting for the referee. And who is giving him the trophy? And this, is, um, this has been some event, you know, Berha. Well, Eugenie, I wonder what the next one will be because we can be sure that the M1 Challenge 32 will be more elevating than this one. I'm looking forward to it. M1 for sure has, um, has great events. They're better and better every time. The fights are all exciting. There aren't that many decisions. And the end of the tunnel is not inside yet. Huh? Alexander, it? not inside. Alexander Milinenko has his hand raised. He takes the main event, wins by TKO over Tadas Rimkevich. Accepts the congratulations of the M1 president, Vadim Finkelstein. And I think this is the finish of the show.